Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Great, thank you for confirmation, everyone. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So, before we get started, let me quickly introduce our Idurica Masterclass community with you all. So, this Masterclass of community was started back in 2019, and since then, we have been closing into more than 32,000 members so far. And in these Masterclasses, we conduct multiple webinars and live events on different topics, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, big data, and multiple front end and back end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free, of course, so there are no charges involved here. And if you want to be a part of this entire group so that you can simply get the updates for each and every webinar that is going to be uh, that's going to be scheduled you can go ahead and click on this link here which says join this group and you will be notified with the entire schedule that has been planned for the month today we have gathered for our discussion on data structures and algorithms in java so let's start our discussion on that so first of all we are going to discuss on the primitive data structures and the linear data structures hierarchical data structures algorithms and then we are going to see a small hands-on on top of it now first of all if you talk about primitive data structures then it's more like based on so basically we can define the primitive data structure as those which are predefined ways of sorting data by the given system altogether that is what we refer as primitive data structure in java and now if to start with we can define the you know, if to start with we can define based on the linear data structures so linear data structures in java are those whose elements are sequential and ordered in a way so that there is only one first element and has only one next element available and there is only one last element and has only one previous element while all the other elements have a next and a previous elements all right as a part of linear data structures and then we have array so an array in a, is a basically a linear data structure representing a group of similar elements accessed by index and the size of an array must be provided before sorting that before storing data so basically each element in an array is a is of the same data type and has the same size the elements of the array are stored at contiguous memory locations with the first element and starting at these uh, the smallest memory location here and then the elements of the array can be randomly accessed and the array data structures is not completely dynamic as well so for now they have multiple examples for example let's say we may want a video game to keep a track of the top 10 scores for that game so rather than using 10 different variables for the stars we can use a single name for entire group and then we can use index numbers to refer to the high scores in that group all right and that's why we have the one dimensional array then we have the double dimensional array as a part of a setup all right and next we have the two dimensional arrays which can be defined as an array of arrays so the two dimensional array is organized from of the matrices which can be represented as a collection of rows and columns and the elements of a two dimensional array are accessed using the intersection coordinates and then we also have the three dimensional arrays so which are basically multi-dimensional array which can be defined as an array of arrays so the 3d array are organized as 3d matrices which can be represented as multiple rows and multiple columns so the elements in an array are accessed using the 3d intersection coordinates available and then we have linked list so linked list uh, is basically a linear data structure with a collection of multiple nodes now where each element stores its own data and a pointer to the location of the next element so the last link is a linked list points which is simply points to a null and and that to indicating the end of a given chain here an element in a linked list is basically called a node and the first node itself is called as the head and the last node is called as the tail here so here we have the first one as head and the last one called as a tail and we can we have different types like we have singly linked list like it is basically unidirectional so it's an alternative of for one dimensional array so the elements in this singly linked list are stored in a sequential format but in different memory locations which are interconnected with each other through pointers just like we have a single dimensional array all right 
and then we have a doubly linked list so w linked list again we can say it's more like a bi-directional so the elements in the w linked list are stored in a sequential format but in different memory locations which are interconnected to each other through different pointers and then we have the circular linked list so basically now we have multiple examples as well let's say we can imagine a linked list like a chain of paper clips that are linked together and we can easily add another paper clip to top or bottom uh, it's even quick to insert one in the middle so all we have to do is here so we just simply have to connect to the chain in the middle add new paper clip and then we have to reconnect the other half our linked list is going to be similar itself as about circular linked list now then we have the hierarchical data structures now after that we have hierarchical data structures here now in hierarchical data structures first of all we have a tree which we also call as a binary tree so binary tree is basically a hierarchical tree data structure in which each node has most two children which are referred to as the left child and the right child and each binary tree has the multiple nodes for example we are going to have a root node a left subtree and right sub and a right subtree so root node is going to be the topmost node which is also referred as the main node and then we have the left node which is basically a binary tree and also the right node which is also going to be binary tree as well and now if you want to learn about the applications of tree then there are multiple applications of trees like it is used in many search applications where data is constantly entering or leaving it is used as a workflow for computing digital images for visual effects and then it is used in almost every high bandwidth router for storing router tables and it's also used in wireless networking and memory allocation and then we have it again it is also used in compression algorithms and many more and then we have graph so graph consists of vertices and edges a vertex represents the entity and the edge represents the relationship between different entities here and then we have hash map so we also refer as a hash map or a simple hash table as well so hash map is basically java working on hashing principles so it's a data structure which allows us to store objects and retrieve them in, in constant time provided we know the key and the same concept now here we can define it as suppose let's say here we have heap so we also refer it as a binary heap so heap is basically a complete binary tree which answers to the heap property and simple terms it's a variation of binary tree with multiple properties like we have so heap is basically a complete binary tree a tree is said to be a complete if it all level except the possibly the deepest are complete and then we have a binary heap like we have or can say the minimum binary heap so for every node in a heap node's value is lesser or than or equals for to values of the children and then we have the maximum binary heap for every node in the heap the node's value is greater than or equal to values of the children next we have algorithms in java so basically now historically used as a tool for solving complex mathematical computations algorithms are deeply connected with computer science and with data structures in particular an algorithm is a sequence of instructions that describes a way of solving a specific problem in a finite period of time and that is why we have used uh, we can say multiple algorithms here and again they are again represented by two things we have flowcharts and then we have a shooter code so basically here first of all we have sorting algorithms so sorting algorithms are algorithms that put elements of a list in a certain order and the most commonly used orders are numerical order and the lexicological order so in this data structures and algorithms articles are simply let us explore a few sorting algorithms here and basically we have the bubble sort so here we have something called as no, bubble sort as well so in bubble sort we bubble sort is basically the simplest algorithm and it repeatedly steps through the list to be sorted compares each pair of adjacent elements and swaps them if they are in the wrong order so bubble sort gets in its name because it filters out the elements to the top of the array like bubbles and flow them into the in the water here now, now in terms of algorithms now we next we have the shuffling algorithm 
So after sorting, we have the search uh, shuffling algorithm. So basically, the shuffle method is provided by the collections framework and is used to destroy any kind of order present in the data structures. And it just it simply does just the opposite of sorting. And then we have data manipulation algorithm. So basically, here in terms of, of shuffling, so here we have reverse, fill, copy, swap, and add all. So in terms of reverse, it simply reverses the order of elements. Then we have fill, which replaces every element in a collection with a specific value. Then we have copy, which creates a copy of the elements from the specified source or destination. And then we have swap, which simply swaps the position of two elements in a collection. And then we have add all, which simply adds all the elements of a collection in another collection defined. And then we have composition algorithms. So basically, in under composition, the frequency returns the counts of number of times. Disjoint detects if two collections contain some common element or not. And then we have extreme value. So under extreme value, we have the minimum and maximum methods of Java collection, which are used to find the minimum and maximum elements of the extreme elements. And then apart from that, we also have the linear search algorithm as well. So in a linear search, we in a linear search, or we can say sequential search, is the simplest search algorithm and provides sequential searching for an element in the given data structures until either the element is found or the end of structure is reached. And if the element is found, then the location of that item is returned. Otherwise, the algorithm returns the null value. All right. So let me just show you one pseudo code for a binary search in Java as a part of a simple hands on. Let's open this up just in a moment. All right. So here we can create any dummy project here. Now here we are simply going to understand the pseudo code. Okay, for that even we don't need the ID here. Let me just give you a small example in a simple code editor itself. We don't need the ID for that. All right. So now the, let's do one thing. Let's simply insert the binary search in a simple code editor here like we have sublime text so here we have a simple procedure not not double d here a simple procedure that we can define as a what as simple binary search as a binary search and then here we can define, define suppose a as what as a sorted array as sorted array and suppose here we define n n as what's the size of array we find n n is going to be the size of the array that we are going to create and then we are going to have x which is basically what x is going to be the value to be searched just for your reference we are simply typing this out so you can use it as a reference here so we have a and an x just as a reference all right and then we are going to find the lower bound the lower bound to be one and then we can find the upper bound the upper bound to be let's suppose n and then we can find suppose while x not found if we define the upper bound to be less than lower bound to be less than the lower bound and then we can simply find exit x does not exist all right, and then we can define set midpoint as a simple lower bound that we can concatenate this with the upper bound minus lower bound, and this is what we have to divide by two. Divide by two, and then we can define if. A. Now, if you get to find A, suppose here we get to find this one as what? As a midpoint. As a midpoint. If it is less than X, then we can simply set the lower bound as a part of midpoint plus one. Plus one. And that too. If the A midpoint is less than x as i was is more than x not less than it is more than x midpoint is more than x 
and then we can find set the upper bound as midpoint minus one and then we can define another condition as if if as a mid as a midpoint and here define as x we can exit x found at location midpoint and then we can find n while as well and then we can simply close it by simply ending the procedure that we had started so this is basically what we have as a part of the binary search so here the search terminates when the upper bound goes past the lower bound which is the last element which implies that we have searched the whole array and the element is not present uh, it is the most commonly used search algorithm primarily due to its quick search time and the time complexity of the binary search is on which is basically a, which is marked improvement on the on time complexity of linear search that we have all right so that's how the entire search algorithm here is currently based in i suppose if you want to see the same thing for linear search let's do one thing so if you talk about linear search then here you find suppose as procedure as linear search and for linear search we can define suppose in terms of value and here we can simply define for i is equal to zero to n minus one we can define simple condition if the value here for i is going to be a value then we can simply print out a statement so here we could have to find suppose print found not the value illegal thread simple value would be value then then it would have been a simple print statement print would have been simple found and then we can simply return and here we define return as i where we can define end if and here we can define print not the brackets here simply end if and then we can define print as not found and here we define end for as end linear search a simple example for linear search so it's more like a brute force algorithm while it is certainly it is the simplest it's most definitely not the most common and that's why it is inefficient as well so again thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day take care bye bye